Hello, everybody, and welcome to podcast number 70 of the Gordon and Sharice show. And thank you so much. We are so excited to be with you today and to go over this topic that I think it's very, very relevant when you're in the middle of a pain storm. Don't you, Gordon? Absolutely. So today's topic? Know who your enemy is. Now, don't look at me that way. I'm not looking at you that way, Sharice. This is December 15th. We have a few more weeks and we're finished with the year. Christmas is here on our tails. We know people are shopping. Mm. We know that a lot of times during the holidays, there's more people that are dealing with suicidal thoughts than ever. There are mm. more people that are despondent and they're not seeing much meaning to the season. So it's a good time on the warm up to remind everyone that we love them and we're trying to share information with them continually that will encourage them to get through each day, get through all the seasons totally. and embrace them fully. And okay? thank you for not being my enemy, Gordon. You're welcome, Sharice. And thank you for not. <laughs> you don't have words, do you? Being <laughs> my enemy. <laughs> Okay. Be afraid. Yes. Be very afraid. Very afraid. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get started with the topic. Okay. Okay. I'll let you go ahead and start it. Wow. Really? Okay. Yes. I'm not prepared for that, but I will because I can just take this. You know, it was interesting because of, you know, a few podcasts ago, something came up in a discussion that really struck a chord in me in our earlier part of our marriage and life our earlier part of our spiritual walk and the walk through the journey of pain, uh, you had mentioned that everything felt like war, felt like warfare, like the enemy it was did. everywhere. It, it was and, nonstop. And so, and so it was so easy to try to just pray it away, pray the pain away, pray the enemy away, pray this away, pray. And it, you, it's, it's almost like we became uh, crazy with, with trying to, to do that and, really and truly there there was a genuine battle happening physically absolutely and i'm not i'm not downplaying that that there isn't spiritual warfare but i think our discernment level on how what is really an attack versus you know what is something you just have to walk through and deal with right. i think our discernment button has grown and grown and grown it will continue to grow right and so how we handle things now is so different than what it used to be. Right. We, we're not downplaying people's battles. Not at all. That they're going through in life. They're There's real. a lot of crisis today. There's some legitimate, gigantic crisis in many people's lives. But I know what it felt like. Here we were. It seemed like there was two or three different new things we were getting hit with every day mm -hmm. and then what happened is over time is that i was at a point of total exhaustion even though i felt loved and everything else and i'm growing in spiritual maturity i felt like take a look a look at a war on our planet how long is that going to last okay we know that we've been worn out in the united states with afghanistan okay that's 20 years well, someone with chronic pain is saying, I don't want to go to war for the next 30, 40, 50 years of my life. Mm -hmm. How do I stand firm in this? I don't, I know I'm supposed to take it day by day, but mm -hmm. my goodness, I don't have 40 years times 365 days in me to make it. Okay. And that's easy to get into that mindset. And that mindset, this battle that I learned through the whole process, it started at the starting line of change. Mm -hmm. And that's where the battle was the greatest for me. I was so focused on how am I going to last through painful suffering and hope for some type of transformation or pain relief. How am I going to last with that for 40 or 50 years we don't even have good medical studies to substantiate a favorable prognosis by doing that how am i going to do that those used to be my thoughts and i know that mm. 
I know that at the beginning, that's what I was hit with. So this starting line of change, this starting line of moving into new, even though I was broken and half of me was was practically living and the other half was dying, at that starting line, the battle was raging against me. And so part of the message today is, is to know who your enemy is. There are some pragmatic steps that we should be taking. In -hmm. other words, the feet on the ground, practical parts of your life. There is power in walking out these steps that are literally initiated by faith. Mm -hmm. You can walk these different things out. So how do you get over that battle that's at the starting line. Being aware of it is one thing, but how does one who says, I'm ready to start, and then that they just get beat up, the battle comes. How, how did you get past that to get beyond that first step of the starting line? Honestly, it took me a while because I was probably beat up a thousand times. And a then, thousand different times. And it then felt, there I come and I might beat you up one more. Yes, but you're not my enemy. <laughs> okay. That's the good news today. Okay? <laughs> we have to remind each other of that today. Yeah, yes. Okay. No, the battle was this. It's that I was beat up another thousand times. And I was blaming everyone else. I was blaming this system, whether it was a disability system or whether it was a medical system or an insurance system or friends who couldn't understand or the church that didn't have ears for those who are really suffering. They really didn't understand or any little thing that would throw me off and increase or agitate my pain. Mm -hmm. It was easy to be frustrated. And so all of those things kept becoming my enemy. It's like, did you make them your enemy? You you know what? I didn't even want to deal with them. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even trying to look at them. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's almost like Jack in the Box. Something new would pop up. Oh, is that my enemy today? Mm -hmm. Or something, something completely unexpected. Something that instead of entering the front door of my life, entered through the back door. Oh, something from my past. That's my enemy today. I kept looking at different things. And I think number one is this. Mm. And this is after 28 years. Suffering actually strengthens our inner person to do this. And, and after having those, those repetitious battles with trying to discern who the enemy was during the battle at the starting line, you've got to recognize, number one, recognize who the real enemy is. Pain does not necessarily have to be your enemy, nor is it necessarily your enemy. That took me years to understand that. I heard about spiritual warfare, and I knew the right words to pray, and Mm. I was eloquent in my prayer life with spiritual warfare amongst a group of Christians. Um, You know, I could take over on that. I understood it. I understood the Ephesians chapter 6 message of of wearing all the weapons of warfare and standing firm in my trials Mm -hmm. and I had done all the religious things that I knew to do to fight the enemy, but nine times out of ten, pain kept popping up. And that was part of the enemy, and I started identifying pain is my enemy. And I couldn't do anything else. And the church didn't understand the advanced medical procedures. They didn't understand the new modern technologies. They didn't understand alternative help. They didn't even preach or share the depths of sharing and the sufferings of Christ. Mm -hmm. These are real sufferings, folks. Mm -hmm. And many people are right in the middle of war. They are. They're in a battle. 100%. They're in a battle. And so some verses popped up for me, Sharice, to recognize who the enemy is. So we, it, first of all, we know that you you came to some point where you you discerned that the enemy might not actually be my pain. Yes. And then what scriptures? The scripture is this. And it was starting to understand this more and more and more in recognizing my enemy. But first, before I could recognize my enemy, I wanted to acknowledge my Savior. I wanted to acknowledge Mm. God. That's beautiful. The enemy does not have power over God, nor does it supersede his authority in your life. We are righteous. 
And it's these words. It's out of John chapter 10. It starts with verse 9. Okay. The Lord says this. I am the door. And if anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. And that was sweet to my soul. God wasn't my enemy. And there were times that I was wrestling with God through several years, wanting the raw, authentic truth Mm. about life where I was wrestling with God. And those words reminded me, he's not my enemy. He's my savior. He's the one that brings me eternal life. And then the next verses in verse 10 of that same chapter of John, chapter 10. Here's your real enemy. And here's how he operates. He operates in a posture of deceive and accuse. And so when I'm looking at the I'm looking at the new things popping up every day. Deception and accusing. Deception and accusing. Hmm. Gordon, you've got a lot of pain in them, and now you can accuse this person. Now you can accuse this situation. Okay? Here's what the thief Hmm. does. Here's what the enemy does. The thief comes, and please put this in bold in your mind, only to steal and kill and destroy. The Lord says, I came that they, that's all of us, y'all, chronic pain, suffering, sin, crime, whatever. God's grace abounds more. Absolutely, Gordon. No matter what. Mm -hmm. He says that I came that they may have life Mm -hmm. and have it abundantly. And when I came to that realization for me, I recognized the enemy of my life. It wasn't necessarily my symptoms. It was I, I gained a fuller meaning about the depths of suffering so that I could appreciate the depths of transformation. And all I had to do, he is the door. All I had to do was walk in. And he gave me the freedom to walk in and go out and go into pasture. And I hungered for his righteousness mm. and I thirsted for it. And he gave me that ability to walk and roam even mentally and with my faith. Totally. And then my physical body slowly started to follow. So I understood that pain was an instrument of spiritual growth. I didn't make it my enemy any longer. I'm telling you, Gordon, that is, I don't know if you could have even put words to this several years ago, but what you're describing is one of the most important keys in your life, yes, in my life, and I think it will actually change the focus and people's perception that that the ones that are listening that have ears to hear, please let the 28 years that you've gone through this speak to you who's listening, whether you've gone through pain for one day, or if you are on your, you know, whatever year this is for you, because this is, this is something I can say as the spouse, Gordon, I have seen such a maturity through this process because you've gone from, it's like you, as you described all these things that would pop up in your life. That's right. Whether it was somebody else, whether it was the church, <clears throat> and I would I I had to add to the pain that I was seeing that I was dealing with emotionally. Th- watching you accuse and be angry like you would if we blame everything else, we become the accuser. We we don't become like God. We become like our enemy, right? We t- and, and, and we we actually start to <clears throat> walk in an arrogance of fear. Yes. Instead and, of spiritual maturity of love. And and what I saw, Gordon, through the process and what I'm watching, it's not just a one-time seeing, I'm, I'm seeing it grow, is that it's given, it opens your capacity to love. It opens your capacity to forgive the people or the institution that can't be there for you. 
It's given you the ability to forgive instead of accuse and to teach and to elevate and to love instead of to and instead of to judge and try to tear down. You're now an instrument of building up. That's right. And and that that shows the fruit of being able to identify who the true enemy is because once you identify the true enemy, it gives you the power to love and build up others. It gives you the power to not be a part of this cancel type thing that's happening all around us. We're not supposed to cancel love. We're supposed to propel love. We need to be a part of a life-giving culture, not a cancel one. I'd rather be a carrier Okay, and I'd rather edify, and it gives you that ability to edify the body of Christ. Absolutely. Or edify, help people, even if they're not part of the body, they may want to become part of the body of Christ. Totally. Okay. And the, when, when you—I'm sorry to cut you off. You had something else to say. Well, I was, we have so many points. Um, I, I Keep going, though. This is very important. This, it's just that, you know, for people who are, who are stuck, I mean, when, when you recognized— that pain may not be your enemy, Gordon. I, I, I saw that shift in you. And it made a shift in me. And I realized my emotional battles with all of this may not be my enemy too. That's true. I realized emotionally, if as I have ups and downs in this journey that I'm walking out with the man that I love, I don't have to run away. I don't have to try to fix it every day. I don't have to, I, and I can get depressed. And there are some times, some days where I'm very depressed. But you know what? I am not depression. I am not, I am not going to stay under that dark cloud in the sense of, I know God lifts me through that. And his love, I, I would say the emotional battle also is not the enemy it's dealing with it. it's it's facing it it's accepting it it's mm-hmm. it's it's it, it, there's just something so profound about that gordon mm-hmm. it will set people free yeah very much so very much so so what i would encourage people is first recognize who the enemy is acknowledge who god is And then make sure your relationship with God is based upon a solid foundation of truth. In other words, our relationship with God is not based solely on emotions or ecstasy or fleeting signs that we think he's trying to signal us with. When the storms of life come and the enemy comes against you and your family and your nation, do not become deceived by the sounds of destructive chaos all around you. Mm -hmm. What gives life? The Spirit. Anything else besides the Spirit is not life. The Spirit is life, period, end of discussion. And God moves us in the Spirit. So the starting point to deal with chronic suffering begins as we choose to follow Him an attitude of following him and make that your present mindset. So powerful. Very powerful. So here we are. We have truth, the cornerstone. That's what we have. Now, what do we do when we swallow the truth? Not just taste the truth like we read in in Hebrews and then we just kind of spit it out. What happens when we take the truth in Swallow it and let it change our complete inner man. Mm-hmm. Change our body. Act as medicine against pain. It becomes a balm. It becomes, it becomes this block between what pain can really do and run havoc by its course. And it gives you the strength to stand in the middle of it. There's a balm. There's something. There's something that that can allow you to coexist with the pain and not worship it and not make it bigger than it is. But it's like, I, I think when you ingest the truth, it gives you the strength to endure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it not only does that, this medicine that we're swallowing, the truth, 
there are actually words associated with it that go in you, that speak to you. These are words from God. The word of God that you ingest Mm -hmm. is medicine for your soul. And these words will also speak against the pain in your body. And what it does is this. Sometimes the pain doesn't go away, but you're going to find there are some pauses with your chronic pain. Mm -hmm. And in those pauses, we experience longer bouts of freedom to allow our curiosities to see the colorful aspects of life. We get to see different things. We get pauses, even though pain may be still low grade in your body. It may not be at the emergency level, but those words that come in can calm us. Hmm. Okay? God knows everything about our lives, Sharice. He knows how many hairs are on your head. He knows how many thoughts you have at one given time. And there's a lot of times where we have this ongoing search to discover the full identity of who God is and what lies ahead. And here we are as Americans, a lot of times, we keep focusing on how do we make our future better? How do we have more money for savings? How do we take care of our kids in this crazy world with inflation? How do we do this to fight a a COVID-19 virus and then we might have more viruses and cybersecurity tax and all these different Mm -hmm. things? And, And hey, I'm still experiencing chronic pain. I feel like I'm being left behind. The Lord says this, when we start to swallow that medicine, Sharice, that truth, it starts to create that present mindset in us Mm -hmm. because it already has the assurance and the certainty of the eternal life that's going to come. 100%. So when it helps us to move into a present lifestyle, it helps us to cope and adapt with the pain. We no longer make it the enemy. We already know we're going to be victorious over it, no matter what the Mm -hmm. level of damage is. Mm -hmm. And if someone believes that they're not going to get any better and the pain wins, my job is not to convince you that you will. My job is to share that there are plenty of people out there that can move forward, take the word of God, let it go in their soul, and I'm going to tell you, it's going to create a present mindset. Yes. It's going to give you a pause, and you're going to recognize who your enemy is. If you had taken 40 or 50 years of pain, like if you just, if you stayed in the mindset of, do I have to go through this for the rest of my life? Here's the next 40 or 50 years of pain when it first hit you. If you put that on every day of your life, I wouldn't if, be here. Yeah, if you tried to if you tried to just like carry it like a bag of rocks or I mean it's much heavier than that but you can't we can't take tomorrow's pains, tomorrow's trials, tomorrow's anything and put that on today. We're not meant to do that. Jesus says not to do that. We have to trust him for today. I so agree, Gordon, because Thank you for showing a present mindset. That is that is something gold. And I don't care if you're in pain or if you have no pain, but your mindset stinks. Right. You know, it's you being in a present mindset, and I'm saying present not on your own, present with God. Be present in God's presence. That's the mindset that will set you free. Right. And let's further talk about the battle. So when you're in the present mindset and you're getting pauses and pain isn't over you necessarily, it starts to get behind you. And even though it exists, I don't care how furious it can be at times, and you're welcome to take breaks, folks. Okay, there's times where you need rest and you need to do what you need to do Mm -hmm. to cope with some high levels of pain. I'm not saying that. But when you get to the point of recognizing that pain is actually not the enemy. The good news is this, is you're going to be able to realize you're going to have an affection and affiliation, and you're going to recognize that you are becoming now that new person. Totally. Transformation takes on an entirely new meaning. It is practical. It is pragmatic. So people ask me, well, how did you get out of bed, Gordon? 
the word of God? They don't like that answer. They don't like that answer. Half of the time, they want the, like, give me your three steps. What did you exactly do? Well, what did you do so I can do it tomorrow? And Well, I read the Bible you did. six to eight hours a day for a few years. And and you had the grace to. I had the grace to. You had the grace to. You know, it's not that you put that on yourself like some some extra weight or legalistic thing. God inspired you to start reading his word as a love letter and i and, and you it, had the grace some people can't read it some people have to listen to it they're not able to even hold a bible right I, and i did and, that as well and you did do that i remember like at the in the 90s we had some audio tapes or whatever it was like on a cassette or something i had all of the and and you listened to it when you couldn't read it but the point is that was your food it was your sub, your sustenance. Your I can't say the word sustenance. Thank you. Um, it really was. It was your life. Well, it 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 was real. It was practical. That word of God, that word of God, did all the things that we just described. Mm -hmm. Now you couldn't just read it though, and stay in bed. There was an active part of you that responded to Him. Yes. So it's it's a relationship. It goes back to a relationship. Right. And when you when you are in the word and you're responding to that relationship, you had a choice. Right. And so instead of selecting pain as my relationship and identifying it as an enemy even though pain exists, I had a relationship with a friend, a king, a savior, a lover, a forgiver, a peacemaker, a great physician, and all in all God. Totally. I chose that relationship because I learned that pain doesn't have to be my enemy. And there is an enemy out there. Okay. There is a battle right now for your soul that's far beyond your pain. And I recognize that thief was only coming to steal, kill, mm. and destroy. So I chose life. I chose the spirit. Okay, let's go through another scripture. This is going to help people who are really struggling. This is another scripture that helped me with the word of God. I am exceedingly afflicted. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Yeah. I wanted to be revived according to his word, and I was exceedingly afflicted. Beautiful. Yeah. And there are a lot of people yep. out there that feel that same thing. And I'm telling you right now, when I swallowed that medicine of hope that comes through the word, it stayed in me. And it was a choice. It was a choice to lean on him, and it was a choice to take more truth serum. It was a choice to ingest it fully more often and then you realize you can start doing thing in things in your inner man in your soul kind of like movement movement is life you can start doing things where you're saying i'm moving away from what i thought was the enemy and i'm going to move away mm -hmm. to the one who rescues us that's so good. Okay. And he delivers us. That's right. Okay. Thought for the day. Well, as I, I'm, we, get, I'm getting those signals from the guys behind we, the camera. I know. We enter this, uh, this beautiful Christmas season. And, and as the world is in so many different levels of chaos and, and things are, are going on all around you, just remember this. The world was in chaos when Jesus was born. Mm. And he chose this frail, human, vulnerable form of being a baby. Mm. Now, how do you face the enemy when you take on the form of a baby? And the wise men bring frankincense and myrrh. Myrrh represents suffering. A little baby was given, you know, the incense of suffering. It was, it was to show that he was going to go through so much. He didn't have to take on that form. He didn't have to go through that. But I'll tell you what, love won. Mm -hmm. And I am so grateful that we have a relationship with 
the Lord himself who chose that humility to show us and to demonstrate that even in the lowliest of places, he reigns and his love is supreme. And I'm just grateful for that. So mm-hmm. we just, um, as we enter into this season, I want to wish everybody that's listening um, a very, not just a Merry Christmas, but a blessed Christmas. And if you feel alone, you're not alone. The King of Kings is with you. Amen, Sharice. I share the same sentiments. And if I could just share a thought of the day, it's um, if you truly want to live an abundant life, you can't do it without God. Mm-hmm. Lean on him during this, this Christmas season. And we know that Christ is the word. And you can have a personal relationship with the truth, with the author of life. It's beautiful. Bringing the spirit of an abundant life, that's what Christ does. Mm -hmm. And truth and faith to all those who are desperately wanting him during this time to experience what's behind those doors of hope. If he's the door, what's behind those doors? Mm -hmm. Okay? And I'm telling you, it's eternal life and glory. So Merry Christmas, and Sharice, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for sticking with me and and fighting the real enemy in our own lives. Thank you, honey. Okay, so we're going to conclude this you. podcast. How do people get in contact with us? I know that we, we always have to do this snippet at the end of each clip, okay, or each video slash podcast production. How, what's the easiest way to do this? I, I think the best place to find all the tools and everything that we um, want to share is on our website at gordonandsharice.com. Go to the website, uh, sign up, be a part of our Facebook community, Become request to be a part of our Better Living community, which is a private group. It's private so that... Uh, so that you feel like you have a safe place. Right. And, and, and if someone else comes on that Facebook group, can I just tell everyone right now? If there are any nasty or insensitive comments, they're no longer going to be members. That's why we invite people to be members. It's to edify and build each other up. We know who the enemy is. We're Let's not, not going to make each other, each other. We're not yeah. going to let chronic pain become the enemy of the group. That's right. Okay. So, so be a part of that community. Sign up for our newsletter. It's a free newsletter. It will give you inspiration monthly. And I would just say, hey, we have quite a few podcasts under our belt now. There's what seventy now. This is beautiful. So there is a lot to catch up on if you've just started listening. So we would encourage you catch up on our podcast, join us and be a part of the podcast on either YouTube, Spotify, Apple. But I, we, we just, we're just asking for you to be a part of our community because we want to be a part of this revolution. Uh, and, and we want, we want to see you succeed through your suffering. Yes. Yes. So thank you again for joining us. And we so appreciate it. And we will catch you next time.